All right. In class, we did some of this. So this is a, a quick review in terms of the questions we did. So this is assignment number 12. Had to do with area. That's top, subtract bottom. And then we used, this is the top, subtract the bottom. We needed our calculator to know where the point of intersection was. So we graphed it and found the point of intersection. And then we used our calculator to find the area. The next one, we revolved it around the x-axis. So we have two uh, radius, a big one and a little one. So we have our big radius and our small one, top, subtract, bottom, and we have our answer. The last question is if the volume was used as the, the base for squares. So the formula for a square is you take the base and you square it. That's for a square. Uh, the base is top, subtract, bottom. And so when you plug it in for the base, this is what you would type in, and that was your answer. The second one had to do with uh, velocity. So you had two, one for A and one for B, two runners. And then there were questions to do with velocity, acceleration, and total distance. And again, we came up with these answers. I didn't simplify them, which is fine. So we have the velocity of the runner at uh, two seconds. So we uh, found the equation of the line there, the slanted line, and plugged in 2 for t. Here we had an equation. We just plugged 2 in. We took the um, derivative for this one. This is the quotient rule. And then plugged in 2. Here off the graph, derivative means slope. So the slope at 2 is 10 over 3. So that's the acceleration. And then part C. Well, I hadn't done part C yet. No, we did it. Did we do total distance? I had it on another piece of paper. What was that other piece of paper I had it? Where I had total distance. Oh, here. So then in part C, for total distance, off the graph, this was a trapezoid. So we found the whole area of the trapezoid. And then this was a calculator one. So you need to type this in your calculator and get the answer for the total distance for the second one. That's an integration question. All right, we're on to the next question. Uh, the figure at the right shows the graph of a derivative from negative 7 to 7. Uh, the graph of the that has a horizontal tangent at negative 3. That means there's a turning point right there at negative 3. And at 2, there's a turning point. So these are going to be good numbers. And then at 5, there's a turning point. And a vertical tangent at 3, right here. All right. Find all the values at which the function attains a relative minimum. So a minimum is when the derivative goes from negative to positive. So at negative 1, it's a minimum. And that's it. There's no other negative to positive. And the reason it attains that is because the derivative changes from negative to positive at negative 1. Find the values of the maximum. So that's when it goes from positive to negative. So at what number does that happen? So that's at negative 5. So at negative 5 is a maximum. And again, the derivative changes from positive to negative. And that's why it's a maximum. Find all the values at which the second derivative is less than 0. So the second derivative is a concavity. When I look off here, the second derivative is less than 0 when it's decreasing. So all numbers from negative 7 to negative 3. And it's also decreasing from 2 to 5. So when the derivative is decreasing, the Please second Valerie, derivative is negative. At what values from negative 7 and 7 does the function attain an absolute maximum? And then justify your answer. So we have whatever the value is here. And then it increases. So we have this area increases. This area decreases. Then, this is the big one. This area increases. See how big that area is? So we have, it goes up, it goes down a lot. But here, all of this is increase. And then it continues to increase all the way to here. So the absolute max is here at 7 when it's done increasing everything.
and we can talk about all the area, right? All the things in terms of that, in terms of what's happening. Okay, turn the page. We might need a calculator here. Water is being pumped underground tank at a constant rate of eight gallons per minute. Water leaks out at a rate of that. So water is being pumped into it at a constant rate. So I'm gonna have two equations here. So one, I'm gonna go entering and it's a constant, just eight. That's the rate going in. And then leaving, that leaking is the square root of T plus one. And that goes from zero to 120. And then it says at T equals zero, we have 30 gallons. So all of that's good. And then part A, how many gallons of water leak out? So leak out from zero to three. That is an integration question. So from zero to three, type that in your calculator. And you get negative 4.667 gallons. And the reason that it's negative is because that's the water that's being lost. Part B. How many gallons of water are in the tank at t equals three minutes? Well, we started with 30, and then we're gaining eight every, a constant eight gallons per minute. So that would be eight times three. That's how many we're gaining. And then we have to subtract what we're losing. So we have 30 and eight times three, and then we have to subtract what we're losing. So all together, it's about 49.33 gallons. So we started every minute we're gaining eight gallons. So three minutes, eight times three, and then we're losing this much, we're leaking, not so much are in there. Part C, find an expression for the total number of gallons of water at any time. So we start with 30, and then we have two equations. One we're adding, which is eight, and then one that we're subtracting. The one that's leaking, let's subtract. So we start with 30, this is what we're adding every minute, this is what the rate is in terms of it leaking, what's adding and what's subtracting. Then it says for part D, at what time is the amount of water a maximum? So this is a table of value questions. So at what time? So we need to know the end. So at zero, we know the answer is 30. We need to know the answer at 120. So if I plug in 120 for T, use your calculator. This would tell you how much water is in there at 120. I can tell you right now that that's gonna be a minimum. And then we need to take the derivative of this. So whatever this equation is, how much there is, you can, so we'll call it A at T, right? It said that in the question. We need to take the derivative of that and make it equal to zero, right? To know of the maximum. So the derivative of 30 is zero. The derivative in this, they cross out and you just plug in. So it's eight T. And the same thing here, the derivative is cross out and you just plug in and it's T plus the uh, square root of T plus one. Or minus, I mean, because we're subtracting. Make that equal to zero, and then that's what we would solve. Oh, sorry, when you, there's not even a, a variable to plug in here, so it's not eight T, it's just eight. 
and then you would solve that. So you would add the square root of t plus 1, you'd square both sides, and then subtract 1, so you get 63. If I did, I can see that at 63, when I plug it into the derivative, so if I plug in positive 1, it's a positive. If I plug in like 80 or 90 or 100, this is going to be bigger than this, so it'll be a negative. So there's a maximum number of water at 63 minutes. So that's a max. We took the derivative equal to zero. We showed this justify in terms of understanding whether why it's a maximum. All right, two more. Next question, you're given an equation that we're probably going to have to take the derivative implicitly. So the question is, show that the derivative is what it says. So can you take the derivative implicitly? This is the product rule. The first times the derivative of the second, and it needs a hook, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is times 1. Then we do it again for the next one. So the first times the derivative of the second, which is 1, but it needs a y prime plus the second times the derivative of the first, and then the derivative of six is zero. So factor out a y prime out of two xy and out of negative x cubed. So both of those down. And then we're going to subtract y squared, and we're gonna add three x squared y, and then we're gonna divide. And that's exactly what it equals. Part B, find all the points on the curve whose x-coordinate is 1 and write an equation for the tangent line at these points. So we're going to plug in 1 for x. So if x is 1, we got y squared. If x is 1, we got y equals 6. And then we're going to factor this. And then the two answers are positive 3 and negative 2. And then it says, find, write an equation for a tangent line for each one of those. So we have x is 1 and y is 3. We have x is 1 and y is negative 2. So we have two points for that. And then we need to know the slope at each one of those. So in other words, you've got to plug in 1 for y, or 3 for y, and 1 for x, and then solve it. So I'll do that down here. So if I plug in 3 for y, 1 for x, 3 for y, 1 for x, 3 for y, and then solve it, I get negative 9 plus 9, so I get zero. You get zero. So that's simple enough. If I do the same work, but instead if I use negative two, so negative two squared, and I plug in, let's see what that answer is. So wherever there is, I put in negative two. That's four, that's negative four. This is negative 6. This is negative 4 and negative 1. That's negative 5. So I get negative 10 over negative 5. So I get 2. Yeah. So I found the slope using those points. So the first equation is going to be so at 1, 3. The equation is y equals, the slope is 0, so it's a 0 times, which is what it is. So ultimately it's just y equals 3. And then the second point is at 1, negative 2. So it's y equals and the slope is 2. And then it's x minus 1 uh, minus 2. So you have your two equations. Part C, find the x-coordinate of each point on the curve 
where the, the tangent line is vertical. So the tangent line is vertical when the derivative is undefined. So it's only the denominator that we need to worry about. So if I look at the denominator, when is the denominator equal to 0? So if I make that equal to 0, this is what you have to do. And we would, you get to use a calculator here. I would use a calculator at the end here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get y by itself. So I'm going to add x cubed and divide by 2x. I'm going to simplify it. So subtract the exponents. It's x squared over 2. Then, because we're going to use our calculator, is you go back to the equation. And wherever there's a y, you put in x squared over 2 x squared over 2. Let's try that again. Here. Let's do it right here. So I have this equation. And then wherever there's a y, I'm going to put in x squared over 2. And then I'm going to use the solve feature on my calculator, comma x. And I'm going to have it solve it for me. So you take it and solve it for me, and you write it down. I'm going to let you do that. All right, last question. Don't leave it blank on there. Use your calculator and solve it. So we have a Diffie Q. I'm going to tell you right now, probably the quiz will be on a Diffie Q that you're going to see. So how do you solve a Diffie Q? We need to separate the variables. So we're going to multiply both sides by e to the 2y, and we're going to multiply both sides by dx. So do you have that simple algebra skill, right? We're going to integrate. So to integrate this, the hook is 2, so I need a 1 half. So it's 1 half e to the 2y. And here is x cubed, and then plus c. You add 1 to the exponent and divide. And then I need to be able to solve for y. Now, do they give you a point? So the point is 0 and 1 half. So at any time, I can do that. So let's plug it in right now. So where there's a y, I'm going to plug it in 1 half. And then x is 0, and then I'm going to solve it. So 2 times 1 half is just 1. So this is 1 half e. That's what c equals. So I have 1 half e to the 2y x cubed plus 1 half e. And then I need to solve this. So I need to solve for y. So I'm going to multiply everything times 2. So 2 times 1 half. So I multiplied everything times 2. Now I need to write it as a logarithm. So to solve this exponential, the exponent is 2y. The logarithm with the base of e is ln. And then inside is 2x cubed plus e. And then the last step is to divide. And you have your equation. And it's done. And then the last question, part b is the domain. So the domain, what's inside has to be greater than 0. So we make it greater than 0 and then solve it. So we're going to subtract e and then divide by 2 and then cube root. So it has to be bigger than the cube root of negative e over 2. And the range for a logarithm is all real numbers. Done. All right. Mr. G Math over and out. Great job doing your work. Till next time.